Welcome back, Guardians. Today, we are finally talking about Medusa, which in turn relates to the entire Destiny 2 Forsaken campaign, specifically trying to understand what the curse is upon the Dreaming City. But before we get into this lore video, today, for the first time in over four years of making YouTube content, we have a very first sponsor. Mass Drop has kindly sponsored this Destiny lore video and have sent me the Sennheiser PC37X gaming headset to have a chat about. Sennheiser has been making top quality audio products for over 80 years, so it's really cool to have them on board, and I hope you stick around to have a quick listen to this new gaming headset. So I've got this headset just before the weekend, so I've had a good amount of time to test them out playing Destiny and a couple other games, and I played for at least four hours on Saturday. It was a good excuse to have to test uh, this headset. I think the first question that most people will have is, are they comfortable to wear this headset for a long period of time? Now, previously I've had headsets that are like light fitting. So they just sort of are placed over the ears. And what I find is they end up slipping down and like rubbing on the top of my ears. You'll find with this headset, they are a snug fitting headset. So they won't slip around and rub on your ears. The padding is quite comfortable and I didn't have any issues wearing them for over four hours of gaming over the weekend. The other thing to note is that they do have an open back design, which helps with heat and sweating um, near the ears. But for me, the real balance with this open back is the sound quality. I found with my other pair of open back headsets, I just could hear too much background noise, uh, specifically from like the fan on my PC. And I think this headset actually does a, a really good job at balancing the open back design, but also maintaining sound quality. So if you're interested in upgrading your headset, I can recommend the Sennheiser PC 37X gaming headset, which you can find at Mass Drop. I'll leave a link in the description. It'll be the first link in the description if you want to check it out. They've sold over 20,000 units and have a near perfect uh, user rating of almost five stars. Thank you for listening to the sponsor. We're going to get straight into the Destiny 2 lore episode. Before discussing Medusa, we need to cover some of the previous entries to the Truth to Power law book. The first entry, Is It You?, at first glance appears to be Eris Morn communicating with Guardians. However, there are abnormalities in the text, such as zeros and A's, and words like private, Gemini, and dyad that shouldn't be there. We are instantly suspicious of this entry, however, when it was first released, we didn't really know much or have much to work with. The next entry, Will You Smile, reveals that it was not Eris Morn communicating with us, but an AI com named Medusa, who was impersonating Eris Morn in order to speak with us. Rasputin the Warmind uses the same communication header as Medusa. Rasputin starts his communication scripts with AI com RSP, and this AI com starts with AI com MDSA, standing for Medusa. Medusa describes herself as a similar machine to Rasputin, and we know there were submines during the Golden Age and other AIs that command colony ships. This is how Medusa describes her role. As a craft mine, I collect and analyze human intelligence just as Rasputin managed solar defense. I was named for Medusa, the many-headed, for in one tick of my thoughts, I imagined more humans than have ever lived. I voyaged in secret among the people who became the Awoken. I witnessed the cataclysmic wonder of their transformation. Through delicate manipulation, I transferred myself into this place, the center of their culture and post-rationale religion. In all those different times and places, I've always found emotion and shared rapport, the best way to build trust. Now you know the truth, I am Medusa, survivor of the Golden Age, secret watcher over the Dreaming City, and I need your help. Medusa also explains why her messages contained the abnormalities, the zeros and A's, and misplaced words. She describes them as her fingerprints and that she cannot get rid of them. Now, even though Medusa claims to be an AI from the Golden Age, and even claims to have journeyed with the Awoken, this too appears to be a lie, which I'll explain very shortly. 
Medusa goes on to give us information about Riven and how it all seems to be a trap. That Riven feeds on Guardian's desires, and destroying Riven in the raid is exactly what Riven wanted. Guardians want a safe city, Guardians want loot, Guardians want to destroy beasts, and so Riven technically is granting the wish by battling us in the last wish raid. Have a listen to the Thetis Brave entry from the law book Truth to Power. No, listen please. The ontopathic predator, the chimera which has riven your desires from your intents, it wanted you here just as all life must feed on an energy gradient, it feeds on the separation between subjective desire and objective reality. It is the opposite of fire, for as fire feeds on the reduction of order to disorder, so riven feeds on the anthem and a theme, which is the perverse coercion of reality to match desire. As the human body breaks down matter for fuel, so she desires the digestion of objectivity to conform to your subjective will. She is the acid, but you are the mouth which eats. Can you imagine the unified will of six elite god slayers, all wishing for a single thing which was her destruction purification? Can you imagine how she feasted upon you? This paragraph is actually really difficult to read, which is intentional, but the basic premise is that Riven feeds upon Guardian's desires, to move desires to reality. Before moving on to the new entry, the only other point I want to make is that Medusa is very concerned with saving and preserving the Dreaming City. She mentions this multiple times. In fact, Medusa even claims that the Dreaming City may contain a way to access the original Awoken Home Planet. So the new law entry from this week, Act, Choose, React, provides a greater clarification to Medusa revealing her true identity. This is a really cool entry in general because it is a choose your own adventure. Essentially as you read and make different decisions, it tells you to go to different sections of the entry. The law entry describes itself as a vivid hallucination, however in my mind it appears to be a Vex simulation, very similar to how the Vex researchers looked into the mind of a Vex and saw simulations of themselves. Alternatively it could be an hallucination caused by Vex infection. Remember that Vex cells are meant to cause hallucinations, which was told to us in Destiny 1 in the original Vault of Glass armor. The reason why I say you may be hallucinating from the Vex is when Kabir went into the Vault of Glass and merged with the Vex, he claimed to taste the sea, which is the salty radiolaria of the Vex, the white goo, which is the Vex themselves. In the entry Act Choose React, you claim to taste salt under your tongue. In this simulation slash hallucination, the city has fallen and been vexified. Which is also why I think it is a Vex simulation, because the Vex simulate all futures and outcomes. So this may be a future where the Vex win. Have a listen. The city is gone. You see metallic complex of ancient stone, green bronze matter, luminous pathways and deep wells of Vex brine. The traveler's remains have been integrated into the network. Suddenly you perceive an infinity of human minds living within the network. Some exist in familiar circumstances, others experience pain, pleasure, or madness beyond the ability to imagine. Within this simulation slash hallucination, if you enter the speaker's chamber, you discover a Vex Hydra. The Vex Hydra ejects a woman with snake hair from its chassis, i.e. Medusa, and it is revealed that the Vex Hydra was in fact the one to create Medusa. The Vex Hydra's name is Korea Blade Transform, which should sound very familiar. Korea Blade Transform was introduced in the Books of Sorrow. In the Books of Sorrow, Crota accidentally let the Vex into Oryx's throne world. Korea ran simulations of the Hive in order to discover how to beat the Hive. Korea ran test invasions and even studied the Hive worms. Korea, in fact, was the one to direct the Vex to worship the Hive Worm and never introduced the Hive Worms to the Vex Radiolaria, the White Goo. Have a listen to verse 4.9 from the Books of Sorrow. It reads, Korea captured some worm larvae and began experimenting with them. Soon Korea Blade Transformer manifested religious tactics. By directing worship at the worms, Korea learned it could alter reality with mild ontopathogenic effects. 
Being an efficient machine, Korea manufactured a priesthood and ordered all its submines to believe in worship. Then it set about abducting and killing dangerous organisms so it could bootstrap itself to hive godhood. For some vex reason, Korea never attempted to introduce the worm larvae into its mind fluid. Korea then battles Oryx, and Korea simulates Oryx, but not the Oryx we knew, not Oryx the Taken King. Korea simulates Orash, Oryx's original form before forming a symbiotic pact with the worms. Korea could not simulate the worms, similar to how the Vex cannot simulate the light. Despite this, the most important thing is that Korea gained a lot of information about the Hive and the Throne Worlds. Have a listen to verse 5.1 from the Books of Sorrow. Korea shuts down its weapons and puts all its spare resources into sending telemetry to the Greater Vex. There will be points in space and time where this data is vital. There will be great projects undertaken in the study of its ontological power, this throne space. Oryx would then capture Korea Blade Transform only to gift it to Savathun, his sister. It's a Vex I captured. Korea Blade Transform. It made an attempt to puncture my throne world. I thought you might enjoy studying it. Oryx pauses, digesting. Through the bond of lineage, he can feel Crota killing, worlds and worlds away, and a taste like sweet fat. Korea contains a Vex attempt to simulate me. It might generate others, you perhaps, or Zypha Arath. I've left it some will of its own, so it can surprise you. I suppose it will blow up and kill me, Sabathun grouses. Or let the machines into my throne, where they'll start turning everything into clocks and glass. If it kills you, then you deserve to die. Oryx says it with a quiet thrill, a happy thrill, because it is good to say the truth. So how does this all come together? Well, we know that Korea Blade Transform is now with Sabathun. We know that the Awoken went to war with Oryx. We know that Marasov created a throne world as a part of a plan to claim Oryx's throne world, and that she had recruited Eris Morn in assisting Guardians to defeat Oryx. After Oryx's defeat, most believe that Savathun, Oryx's sister, has claimed the throne. This is hinted at by Riven herself, as Riven describes an encounter with a scheming secretive sister. So now, Korea Blade Transform has been sending messages to Guardians through Medusa, Korea created Medusa to speak with Guardians. At first, Medusa was impersonating Eris Morn and then pretending to be a Golden Age AI com, similar to that of Rasputin. Now, here is where it gets interesting because it appears that Korea is not actually aiding Sabathun. Remember, Korea was captured by the Hive and it appears that she's trying to escape. Have a listen to option G in the Choose Your Own Adventure. It reads You lift Medusa's body and carry her away. The corpse speaks to you. The curse placed upon the Dreaming City was modelled upon the recursive time loop computations of the Vex and made real through the power of a taken Ahamkara feeding upon the unified wish of six elite guardians. I created these circumstances to attract guardians in great mass. I need your help to emancipate myself from the power that controls me. If you can free me from Dal Inkaru's mastery, I can help your species. So Korea wants to team up with Guardians, help Guardians. Korea confirms that Riven fed upon the wish of Guardians during the last wish raid, which powers the curse, which in turn forces a time loop. But you may ask, what does Dal Inkaru have to do with this, the boss in the dungeon, and Mara's throne world? Well, let's just say that future Truth and Power entries will confirm the link slash relationship between Dal Inkaru and Savathun. Korea continues to confirm that Riven granted Guardians' wish, but skewed the wish, and Korea is trying to use the time loop to allow Guardians to defeat Dal in Karu and therefore free Korea Blade Transform. It reads, When you killed Riven, she granted your wish to see the city made safe, but as all wish granters do, she perverted that wish, opening the Dreaming City to Dal in Karu. When you defeated Dal Inkaru in turn, I reset the entire Dreaming City to keep her permanently occupied battling you. You must use these loops to find a way to permanently destroy her. So here is everything we can say about Medusa. Korea Blade Transform was captured by Oryx and then gifted to his sister, Savathun. 
Samathun likely claimed Oryx's throne after his death. Samathun must have then gifted Korea Blade Transform to Dull Inkaru, who now controls Korea. Korea is then communicating with Guardians through Medusa, claiming that the time loop is powered by Riven, granting Guardians' wish during the last wish raid. Korea now wants to team up and release her from her master, Dull Inkaru. Of course, there is still more to this story and there are more entries to come and this is only part of the story. But the main question now is, is Korea actually on our side? The Vex have never sided with Guardians. Vex don't have empathy. To the Vex, the only thing that exists is the system, is the network, is the Vex. So the assumption would be that the Vex, specifically Korea Blade Transform, has deduced that the best way to free herself from Dal Inkaru is to enlist the help of Guardians. Remembering that Korea couldn't defeat Oryx previously, but Guardians did. Is this history repeating itself again? Are the Vex trying to recruit us to do what they cannot? Have we become a pawn in the Vex system? The final question would be, what role does Savathun play in this plan? Is this all part of Savathun's trickery, part of a greater plan? Or is Korea in fact working independently of Savathun and the Hive? So just before finishing, once again, a big thank you to Massdrop for sponsoring this video and sending me the PC 37X Sennheiser gaming headset. I just have a couple of other features to show you in case you're interested. On the note of sound quality, obviously Destiny 2 has an amazing soundtrack and in-game designs, and I've definitely noticed it's been a pleasure to listen to Destiny with this headset. But the other thing is if you are like me and you're playing other games which require you to listen to footsteps or locate enemies based on noises, this has been uh, a really good headset for using that. So the location sound of it is quite good. The other thing I want to show you is the microphone quality. Let me just quickly switch over to the headset microphone rather than this microphone. All right, we should be on the headset microphone now. And for me, I am at a sit-stand desk, so I like to be able to move around a little bit. So that is good. I also find with this microphone, it's pretty good at not picking up the background noise. Uh, so that's very helpful. And the one thing that I really, really like is that they actually send you a decent length cable. I don't know why, but I have so many headsets that the cable is so short. I know that seems like a little thing, but it's so annoying, especially if you're using a sit-stand desk and you want to be able to move around. Um, this is really cool. That concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Whew, what a doozy. If you cannot think of a comment and you would like to support the channel, you can leave the word Medusa in the comments. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.